Hey everybody, this is lesson 37 and the topic is drawing pictures of fractions. The next couple lessons in a row are really short, really basic concepts, but um, worth us pausing to take a moment to review them. Visualizing fractions or even taking the time to represent them on paper by drawing pictures is a really basic, um, I use this word a lot, but foundational piece of understanding how fractions work, why they work, why they make sense. And drawing pictures or visualizing things might be something that's really beneficial for you. Maybe not. Maybe not, and you don't need to use this at all. But when in doubt, if you ever run into issues with working with fractions um, as, as equations, you can always resort back to pictures or diagrams or images. So let's move on, take a look at our learning targets, and try a few examples together. Um, our one learning target is just to draw pictures to represent a fraction. That's it. Two different examples we're going to do today. Um, I'm gonna to zoom out just a tiny bit so you can see this whole screen. Draw three squares. I'm hoping you do have paper and a pencil in front of you. Um, if not though, I'm hoping you are at least going to take the time to sit and visualize this. Draw three squares and shade one half of each square a different way. So pause your video, try this, or at least take a mental moment to think about, well, how can I represent these three squares shaded in half, one half, different ways. Uh, unpause your video when you're ready to check and see what I did. Okay, so here you have it. I represented one half in each of these squares a different way. And if you haven't figured this out already, the possibilities are literally endless for how to represent one half shaded in in any given shape, because we can think of countless ways to represent one half because of equivalent fractions. So I've just shown three here. Um, I've drawn a horizontal line and shaded in the top half of this square. You of course could also show a, a vertical line and shade in one half. I've done a diagonal line here and I've shaded in one half that way. And then just for something different, um, I've actually broken this square into four different quadrants and shaded in two of them not necessarily next to each other, but two out of four quadrants shaded in would also equal one half. So here's just one more way to represent that. Um, I thought this was kind of strange on the slide here, but it's worth a moment to just stop and have this conversation. What is a square? Um, just remembering a square is any quadrilateral that has exactly two sets of parallel lines. They form 90 degree angles. And then one thing, um, specific about a square is that each side length is equal. So that's what helps us kind of know exactly what to shade in when representing one half. We're going to be asked to do the same thing here with rectangles. So draw a rectangle and shade one third of it. They've actually shown two rectangles here. So I'm going to, when we pause the video, I'm going to show two different ways to represent this one third. Go ahead and pause your video, do this on paper, or at least mentally visualize how you would divide this into one third, uh, shade one third of it, and then unpause when you're ready to check what I did. Okay, so here you have it. In this rectangle, I've drawn three, um, or I've, I've divided this into three horizontal sections and I've shaded in this bottom section. I've done the best that I can to um, represent these thirds accurately. I know they're not perfect by any means, but um, I've shaded in one out of the three sections that I've created, which then would represent one third shaded in. And then same thing over here, instead of horizontal lines, I've drawn vertical lines, divided this evenly into three sections. By shading in one of the sections, I've shaded in one third or one out of three sections. And then uh, really quick, one more time, uh, what is a rectangle? Well, a rectangle, um, Rectangles and squares have very some, some common characteristics. Uh, rectangles also have two sets of parallel lines, form 90 degree angles, but we know um, all the side lengths are not the same. That's only specific to a square. One last example here for us to take a look at, and this is a circular. A circular courtyard is made of white stone and blue stone. If one half of the courtyard is made of blue stone, which diagram could not represent the courtyard? Explain why. Give this a try and unpause your video when you're ready to um, check your work. Okay, so when looking at these examples A through D, the first thing I wanted to take note of was this circular courtyard 
how many sections has this courtyard been divided into? They didn't tell us that in the original problem or in the in the in the story, really. So um, all I have said is one half is made of blue stone. So I went and I looked at each of these examples and I counted to see how many sections they were broken into. And each of these courtyards was broken into eight sections. So each of them has eight. Knowing that, knowing that there are eight total sections in the courtyard, I look back at the information that I'm given. Half of the courtyard is made of blue stone. So now I need to ask myself, what is half of eight? Well, half of eight is four. So I know that any picture here, no matter what order or what design, half of them, four sections need to be blue. If four sections are not blue, that does not represent one half. So let's take a look. Let's look here. Out of the blue, blue stone, I have one, two, three, four. Yep, that's right. That represents one half. Let's look here. One, two. Eh, there it is right there. Let's just double check the other ones though, just to be sure. Um, one, two, three, four. Yep, that represents one half. One, two, three, four. Reminds me of a windmill. Yep, one half. So our answer in this case is B. B does not represent one half. All right, I'm hoping that's helpful for some of you. 